Hey y'all, it's Chris with Rockin' 8 Farm. Today is the day I am actually jumping in the truck and I'm heading back out to our processor. I got the call notifying me that the, uh, the, the pigs are ready to pick up. So um, it's about an hour drive to the processor, hour drive back. Um, as I've stated in the past, we do use a USDA processor that is also certified humane. So uh, it's, it's worth a drive for us, I think. Uh, my plan is I'm going to drive up there. I've got the boys with me today. Um, I believe very firmly that it's important for your children to know where their meat comes from. So they're tagging along with me. We're going to drive up. We're going to pick up the meat. We're going to drive back home. Um, we'll do a bit of an unboxing, take a look at the meat, take a look at the packaging, etc. cetera. Uh, get some totals going on, total amount of meat, total cost. Um, I'll figure out some feed ratios as far as cost goes. And we'll kind of figure out, you know, what the bottom line is as far as how much it costs us to raise our own pork for the last year so uh that's it for now um i'm gonna go ahead now that i'm pulling out of the drive and let y'all go for a second so i can have both hands on the wheel and uh we'll catch up with you once we get up to uh, the processor all right y'all here we are let's go inside and see how we did So it looks like we were, let me see, 149 and 182 on the hanging weights. They do their hanging weights head on here. So we'll go home, we'll take a look at those live weights and then we'll add in um, the butchering fees and the cost of feed and um, the cost of mineral. And for these ones, I actually purchased these as feeder pigs. So we'll, put, we'll throw in the, the, uh, the cost of uh, the pigs themselves. We'll break it all down and we'll come out with like a per pound price. We'll compare that to like a grocery store. Um, and probably more likely than not, we'll be comparing it to a non-like product, like a lesser product, because it's actually pretty difficult to find um, true grazing pasture-raised pork. So um, we'll be comparing it to very much a non-like product, a lesser quality product. Uh, and then I'll also talk about how we could have saved even more money. And, um, you know, besides obviously just processing them ourselves, but the fact that we're getting ready to have piglets that, you know, we don't have to pay for those piglets. Uh, and then, you know, if I, if I make my own bacon and make my own sausages, the cost savings there. So, um, uh, got to get back home so I can break down all those numbers and, um, We'll take a look at the meat itself and uh, go from there. All right, so we got a shoulder butt roast here. Um, <clears throat> I didn't pay the extra money to get them weighed out, but you can see that what this company will do for you if you want is um, they'll put your logo on the meat and they'll weigh it out and when you give them your price list they'll put the price on it total price um, and it'll be all ready to sell basically since they're a usda processor but one of the things that i really want you to notice when you look at this pork is this is just the butt roast but look at how red all of this meat is and how much marbling we've got in here let's see if we can find some pork chops I did pay a little bit extra for them to um, save any fat that they could pull off the pig for me. We're going to render this down. We use the, the lard for our cooking. We've got some baby back ribs. We've got some spare ribs. Now keep in mind, y'all, when you're looking at these, these are not your big old 800 pound market hogs. So obviously all your meat cuts are going to be smaller on them. All right, y'all, here we got some pork chops. I do not mess around when it comes to my pork chops. I had them all cut to an inch and a half thick. Beautiful fat cat. Again, look at all that mar that marbling right here in these loin chops. Again, y'all, since this is the first time that we use this processor, I wanted to go ahead and try out some of their products. In the future, when I send hogs off to be processed at this particular processor, and they ask me, Chris, how does the garlic bohemian sausage taste? Well, I wanna be able to tell them it's, it's good stuff. Um, the one thing about this processor is the sausage orders, it's 20 pounds before you can switch to kinds. 
but uh, with the two pigs, I was able to get three different kinds of sausage. So this entire box here is the garlic bohemian. I got a whole box of pork, jalapeno cheese, summer sausage. And then I've got two boxes, one for each pig basically. This is the, uh, this is the bacon that they actually cured and sliced. Again, you can see kind of that it's nice thick slices. And I went ahead and had all of the jowl meat made into jowl bacon as well. So between the two boxes, if you count both the belly and the jowls, looks like that I've got 14.2 on one and 12.2 on the other. So we're looking at 28.4 pounds of bacon. That should get us through about a week. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some numbers. So what I've got written over here, these are the individual weights of each box. And it came out to 194.6. So I brought home 194.6 pounds of meat. Now they're hanging weights or they're rail weights. And remember, this is, you know, head still on, you know, all those big bones still in the body, etc. So the hanging weights of the two pigs were 149 pounds and 182 pounds, which came out to 331 pounds. So out of 330 pounds worth of pig hanging on the hook with the guts removed, pretty much, I brought home 194.6 pounds of meat. Now my total cost for the processing today was $585.45. We'll go over these other numbers here in a second. But here are some of the extras that I got. So this is an area where I could have saved money. Now obviously I could have saved money by just processing them myself completely. But here in the state of Texas, if I want to sell these cuts, they need to be processed at a USDA processor. Obviously what happens between me and a customer is between me, the customer, and the fence post, which is a saying we have down here in Texas, but if I'm gonna to go to farmer's markets or if I'm actually gonna sell pork through my farm business, then I need to cover my rear end and use that USDA processor. So I had sausage made and let me say I had three different sausages made. They came out to 20, 40, and $55. Uh, the bacon from pig one was $24. The bacon from pig two was $28. I also had jowl bacon made at $8 and $6. That was a total of $171. So if I had taken the pigs to the processor and had them cut, but brought all of the, the trim and the, um, the ground and the bellies and the jowls home and just made my own bacon and sausage, then I could have saved that $171, which would have brought me to $414.45 for the processing of two pigs. Now keep in mind, processing means um, the slaughter fee um, and then cutting them into all the cuts and packaging them. So to raise my pigs here on the farm, I had them on the farm for 289 days. In 289 days, I went through 35 bags of feed and two bags of minerals. My feed cost is about, uh, I believe it's $14 a bag, and my minerals, I'm paying basically $50 a bag. So, um, so my total cost for these hogs was $585.45 for the processing, $590 in feed and minerals, and then these two pigs, I actually purchased them from my breeder as feeder stock at $125 a piece, so that was $250. So the total cost was $1,425.45 to bring home 200 pounds of meat. So this is written backwards, but you know what I mean. Total cost is $1,425 divided by 194.6 pounds of meat comes out to $7.32 a pound. Now here's where I'm at as far as potential. <clears throat> okay, so this is the potential. I, could, I would potentially have a pig cost of zero because they're my pigs. Uh, feed 295 because that's not going to change. So 295 is half of that. So this is per pig now. Uh, the processing 207 because it was 414 to process two pigs. So 207 if I make all of the bacon and sausage myself. So the 502 divided by 97 pounds, which you know I, I honestly think I can do a little better than 97, 97 pounds of meat out of one pig. I learned a lot with the processing of these first two pigs, and like I said, I think I can get them. A little bit bigger just a little bit quicker um, and hopefully still keep them as lean as these guys were so anyhow even at only basically a hundred pounds I'm getting my cost down to 518 so what you're seeing here is your store bought the other white meat pork and here is a bone-in pasture-raised pork chop look at that red marbled meat now to break this down we're gonna go to the USDA website we can see here that this is the pastured pork 
uh, report for the month of October. When we start taking a look at this and start taking a look at the costs, we can see that as I scroll down here, we can see that when we look at the, the high cost, the low cost, and then your national average, as we scroll down, there's just no amounts that are below that $7 and something that I'm paying. So I'm getting better prices than the national average when I raise them myself as opposed to purchasing them. Now, when we scroll over to the next side, you're going to see that that commodity pork, that's your store-bought pork. So again, we've got like a high and a low for each cut that you can get um, and then compares that to commodity. And then it shows you that there is a pasture pork premium. So pasture pork is just worth more money. So you're looking at all these prices and you're thinking, you know what, Chris, that's great. I'm glad that you were able to get the price of your pasture pork down to below what you would have to pay if you bought it from somebody else. That's fantastic. But Chris... I never have and never will pay $7 and something cents a pound for pork, period, end of story. So this really doesn't apply to me. So listen, what you put into your body and what you eat are very personal decisions, okay? The bottom line is that if you are still eating grocery store pork, it's got to be for one of three reasons. You either are at a place in life where you can't afford, you know, grass-fed beef, pasture-raised pork, uh, pasture raised chicken, organic eggs, etc. You're either at a place in your life where you can't afford those things, which is fine. I totally get that. Did that for years and years and years and years, probably about 42 of them. But in the last few years, I've decided that's not what I want to do anymore. Okay, so I get that. I get that maybe you just can't afford the more high quality meats is what we'll call them. Another reason is that you don't know. You don't know about the living conditions of the animals that are in your grocery store. See, I've actually been to CAFOs or concentrated animal feed operations. I have seen the pigs packed shoulder to shoulder. The smell was absolutely horrific and they were covered in what I thought was mud, but eventually I was able to put two and two together that between the smell and the fact that they were covered in this stuff, it was their own feces and their own urine mixed into a muddy concentrate along with the soil that was in this dirt pen and that's what they were standing elbow deep in. I saw that when a young piglet or a chicken because they did eggs on this place died they just threw the dead carcass to the pigs who very quickly devoured it. I saw that they were being crammed with pretty much nothing but corn which allows a pig to put on weight very fast but if you were to do these pigs blood work, you would discover that they were unbelievably nutrient deficient. See, a lot of people think like, even when you talk about people like, oh, a fat person is a healthy person, nothing could be further from the truth. Because in order to gain that much weight, it's because we're getting way too many calories from carbohydrates, sugars, etc., which have no nutritional value. And that's what's happening when these pigs are being stuffed full of corn. No nutrients whatsoever, but they put on a lot of weight, they grow really fast, and they get fat really fast. So you end up with a 600-pound pig that they can get great big pork chops and all that stuff out of, but if you were to do a blood test on that pig, you would find out that it is anemic. It is vitamin deficient. It is nutrient deficient. And y'all, you are what you eat. So when you then take that pork and you eat it, what do you gain from it? You gain nothing from it except for a sense of fullness. There's no... There's no value to that meat. When you eat pork or you eat beef that has been raised on grass, you're getting the vitamin D, the vitamin K, the iron, the potassium, all the things that are in the soil that go into the grass, that goes into the mouth of the animal, into the gut of the animal, into the body of the animal, and then we process that animal. And now all of that nutrient is available to us through that meat. The third reason would be you just don't care. Because if you have total knowledge of how inhumanely animals are treated in CAFO settings, you know wholeheartedly that the meat has no nutritional value. You have the money to spend on higher quality meat and you still choose not to. Well then, this video, this pork, it's not for you. There's nothing I can do to help you. See, my wife and I were very intentional about this decision. We wanted the grass-fed beef. We wanted the pasture-raised pork. So you know what? We're at a place where we can afford it. 
and we don't make a whole ton of money. There's a lot of people out there that make as much money as we do that say that they can't afford the meat. Well, that's because they choose to spend their money in other places, and that's fine. That's your decision. But I choose to eat good, healthy, quality meat that was humanely raised and humanely slaughtered. I choose to know where my meat comes from and that it gave its life so that it could feed my family instead of having a payment on a fancy truck or taking a ton of vacations. If you want the fancy truck and the ton of vacations, I am not judging you. That is just your personal choice. You go ahead and eat that store-bought meat. It's just not for us. You saw the pigs when I took them to the processor. I'll link that video up here in the corner. And you have seen the meat and you've seen the numbers. I'm sure somewhere down the road we'll have a video showing you some of the recipes. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope it was informational and it kind of helped you break down costs. So until I see you all again, this has been Chris with Rockin' 8 Farm. Be happy and live healthy.